Hamsters always seem to die in extreme ways. People have read it. How did your pet hamster die? I once had 6 hamsters. They keep eating each other until there's one left and that one remaining ran on the wheel until it died. My brother and I got hamsters. A white one, mine, named Snowball, and a brown one, my brother's, named Cockapuff. We went to bed, and when we woke up Cockapuff was ripped open and Snowball was covered in Cockapuff's blood. Horrifying. Oh my god it's my thread. My hamster exploded. I'm serious. Me and my dad went on vacation for a week, when I was maybe 11, and left my hamster Furby at my grandma's place. Furby was an awesome hamster. He was massive. Would fill an adult's hand. He never once bit me. He never tried to run away. I'd take him to hang out with me when I played with toys. He peed on the rug pretty often and that's cool to a child. I adored that hamster. Anyway, on the 30 minute drive home, Furby is flipping the duck out. Desperately biting the edges of his carrier. I tried my best to keep him calm but it just wasn't enough. He kept frantically running around. At one point he pauses to run his little paws over his face a few times and suddenly there's just blood flying from his mouth. It hits some upholstery. In the car super easy to see because the seats were light grey. I also proceed to flip out at this point. I'm in the back seat because I'm not big enough to be in the front. My dad offers no reassurance and makes no effort to pull over anywhere. And I get to watch poor Furby smear blood all over and bleed out right in his carrier. Yeah. Obviously very horrifying to me as a child. My hamster got lost under the floor of my house when I was like 9. We put a small camera on a wire and sent it down the hole it had chewed in our carpet while we were away to observe the hamster until we could get it out. I found that it had chewed our insulation off to make bedding and had eaten at least 20 large spiders under there, evidenced by a large pile of legs around her makeshift idiot. This kept up for 5 days until she came out as if nothing had happened. She died 3 days later. A vet later told us that she had broken her jaw clean off on one side whilst chewing through our foundations. This meant that this little ducking legend had chewed through half of a stone floor, murdered the local population of arachnids, and mined about a kilo of insulation from the area with a broken jaw. Also broke the wire supporting the camera on her way back up. It'll never forget you. Misty, you will always be the bear growls of pets. My wife had a hamster when she was a little girl. She snuck it into school one day in her backpack to show her friends. One of her friends asked to hold the hamster. When my wife gave her the hamster, her friend ran into the science room and dropped it into the top of a snake terrarium thing. When I was 10 I yelled, boo at my hamster to scare it and it went into shock and died. I got another hamster when I was 12 and it bit off its own foot and died of blood loss. My little brother had an albino hamster named Ozzy, with the red eyes and white hair skin. Ozzy was a mean asshole. He'd constantly try to bite people and piss shit on us. He had a labyrinth attached to his cage. And one day he decided to take all the rip I'm French and this is how we call the little wood pieces you cover the bottom of the cage with. Pardon me if the term is incorrect and backfilled a labyrinth with it until he got trapped. That was between two cleanings. So it took a couple days to realize what was going on. My brother found him dead on a pile of fesses and piss. Trapped in his labyrinth. As much as I hated this hamster, he had my respect cause he was constantly dragging a nutsack larger than his head, not a figure of speech. The ducking thing's balls made half its body. Edit forgot to mention that I'm pretty sure he was suicidal. He jumped off the kitchen counter and table many times. Maybe not that extreme, but I had a hamster in a tiny New York City dorm room in college, which was against the rules. They were coming around to do room checks, and I put the entire hamster cage under my bed for a few hours, to hide it still with plenty of access to oxygen, just not sunlight. Came back to it, and it was dead on the floor of the cage. I didn't know what I did wrong. Still don't to this day, held a proper burial for him with a marked grave around the 96th street, in trance to Central Park on the east side. If anyone wants to go lay some flowers for him, one died of a heart attack when I tried to pick him up. Another rolled itself down our 16 steps staircase. 
and his brain was pretty much jello at that point. Another escape and we believe it died in our walls somewhere. Never found. Not my hamster. But it's a good story. A friend of my mum's was pet sitting for someone, and they decided to get the hamster out, so the kids could hold it. Unfortunately the cat had other ideas, and pounced on the hamster. Killed it and then promptly got it stuck in its throat, and choked to death. Long story short. Within 2 minutes she had accidentally committed a double homicide of her friend's pets. Backstory. As I remember. I was 8. My dad was against the idea of myself having a pet as he did not think I could take care of one. However I persuaded him to get one. My room was one the ground floor with a basement around the same size as the ground floor. The hamster. When I got the hamster. Bear in mind this was bought online. And I had no choice on what type. It was rather large this is important later, and it used to bite all the time. The hamster cage was a large acrylic double floor mansion with tubes leading to powder baths and food. However this hamster was not content with this. The cage was unhooked at the top, to gain access through the top, with a wooden lodge just below this access hatch. Every night the hamster would bite and claw at the acrylic top annoying me during the night. The escape. In the week up to the end. The hamster would bite me every time I would handle him. One night the hamster escaped, and I noticed this at 10 at night, because the noises stopped, and I went to have a look. I was 8 I was worried about what my parents would think about me being awake, but I gathered up the courage, and went down to the basement, and found the hamster downstairs. I caught him, and brought him back to his house. However this time the hatch was bent indicating he escaped from here. After this I put a dictionary on top to cover the hole, and prevent the lock from opening. A few nights later the scratching stopped again, so I went down to have a look. He was gone. I went downstairs again, and looked for him. But after a hour of panicking and him still missing, I was persuaded to go back to bed and look for him in the morning. However he was still missing. The engine. After about a week, he still was missing. Then for some reason. I forgot why. There was something wrong with the water system and a guy came over to fix it. However after about an hour, my dad asked me to come downstairs and look at this. In the water pump was a large hairless, pink, pill shaped dead hamster around the size of two aluminium cans on top of each other, with large amounts of hair floating and also clogged. Of course me begin 8 I was in tears. After this I was not allowed another hamster as a result of what happened to the first one. Not mine but a friend's hamator. Friend tricked me into sticking my finger in his cage to pet him knowing he bites. Little guy latched onto my finger and my initial reaction was to pull my hand away as fast as I could. Hamster went flying across the room and slammed into the wall killing him. Friend blamed me and wanted me to replace it. I said he wasn't responsible enough to own one and left. When I was a kid I noticed my hamster was making a strange wheezing sound. I put my hand in her cage to pet and comfort her, but she bit me which startled me, and I knocked the cage over. I put it back, and she slowly walked to the corner of the cage, resembling the walk of a drunk person, and just laid down and died. It was Friday the 13th too. My sister and brother each had one. They had those balls you could put them in, so that they could roam about the house freely. I guess someone left the basement door open and my sisters bounced down to the basement couldn't find it for weeks. My dad made the discovery of the dead hamster in the ball in the sump pump hole floating dead. One died eaten by worms I think a fly lay eggs inside him because his cage was dirty other was eaten by the cat. Other escaped and disappeared. But the worst was the one I killed twice. I woke up in the middle of the night to something crawling on my back. I thought it was a spider so I violently shook it off. Turns out the hamster had escaped and was walking over me. The thing looked dead. It hit the wall very hard. So I thought a good way to dispose him was burning him on a funeral pyre. So I made a fire in the backyard and throw him in. As the flames reached him, it started moving his whiskers. The poor thing was paralyzed or in shock from the hit. I didn't know what to do. So I let him burn because I thought it would be better than trying to save him and make him suffer from the burns. I was 8. My classmate who lived in the same area with me had several hamsters and he just gave one to me. In a glass jar with holes in the lid. I had it the whole day until mom got home from work 
and told me to take it back to the classmate. I knew the building where he was living, but not the apartment, so I left it out in front of the door. It was freezing and snowing outside, so the hamster froze to death. Not a hamster, but an equally small rodent. When I was younger my mom would let me take my pet mouse in the bathroom to play with it. I assumed that if I lost control of it then it wouldn't go far. One day it was trying to get under my foot. To hide from me I suppose. It tried so hard to get under my shoe it broke its neck. I remember its head kind of jerked to the side and it just laid on the floor tweaking and violently shaking for a second. Then nothing. I was horrified and even though it happened to me at 5. I remember it like it was yesterday. When I was 10, my parents got me what they thought were two male hamsters. Eight hamster babies later, they escaped their tank and were nowhere to be found. About a year later, my father was doing some work on our furnace and found a whole pile of little hamster skeletons that we assume had burned to death when the furnace lit up. We had to an, like many other commenters, one of them ate the other, but then the surviving one became very depressed. We tried for a long time to fix her up, but to no avail. Eventually she started trying to trap herself under her wheel. We caught her doing it on purpose a few times, so we had to get her all new toys, and a couple weeks later she suffocated herself. When I was a senior in high school, two of my best friends got me a hamster as a gift I had just worked hard to find a good home for a chinchilla I had had for several years because I did not play with it much. So the last thing I wanted was a hamster. It bit me whenever I held it and then would bite me whenever I put food in its cage. It also ran endlessly on its wheel all night. Keeping my sister and I awake I put the cage in our shared bathroom between our rooms. Needless to say, the hamster was quite the annoyance. I came home one day after school and my mom said she let the hamster go. It was December, in Michigan. There was a foot of snow on the ground. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.